Welcome! This video is a small window into what it was like to shop for a sewing pattern during the late 1800s and early 1900s. This book is a reprint of four complete catalogs of the following issues. E. Butterick Catalog for Summer of 1873, 1882, Ladies Standard Magazine, April 1894, and the Spring and Summer 1909 Ready Reference Catalog for McCall's Patterns. The illustrated garments in these catalogs could be mass-produced or be pre-cut to standard sizes. At the back of this book is a disclaimer, a copyright-free source of delightful illustrations. To recap, this book is a reprint of three sewing pattern catalogs and one fashion magazine. During this period, ready-made clothes were not sold yet, with the exceptions of men's and boys' ready-to-wear items from the 1850s. The people with money could commission a seamstress or a tailor to produce custom garments. Therefore, the design sources came from the skills and talent of tailors or seamstresses. Families of limited means found the acquisition of fashionable garments hard to come by. Sewing was made by hand or with a sewing machine to those who could afford it. A passion periodical called Demores Monthly Magazine offered a one-size-only pattern template meant to be altered to suit any figure. Sir Patrick was the first American who sold mass-produced tissue patterns that were sized accordingly. In 1868, E. Patrick offered 18 standard pattern sizes in different styles. This mass-produced tissue pattern consisted of a cut, a notched tissue paper pattern, a cutting and sewing instruction paper, and drawing of the finished garment. James McCall, another player, in the sewing pattern market exclusively sold their products by a mail or from the company's main office. How this worked was a female artist sketched the styles inspired by many European trends and after being approved in production the fashions were cut in muslin sewn together as garments and fitted on human models. These original mocks-ups were taken apart and proportionally sized. If ordered by a mail, customers would have to select and send their name, address, and their measurements. Included in the mail was cash money and the reference number of the pattern, which correspond to the style. The client would have to go to the post office and mail this to the company. Once the measurement and money is received, the original muslin pieces were used as templates from which the tissue patterns were cut. The patterns were then packed and ready for purchase. Sewing catalog books cost money. It was not a free publication. It cost about 10 to 15 cents or sometimes offered for free with a yearly fashion magazine subscription. An example of measuring instruction in the late 1800s. The ad stated that in buying our patterns, see for yourselves and the measure are taken correctly. It is immaterial whether the party taking the measurement is standing before or behind the person being measured. The accountability is on the customer placing the order. If the company made a mistake, it was truly the mistake of the person taking the measurement. Here is the front page of E. Butterick and Company catalog in the summer of 1873. These are the selections, ladies' patterns, misses, girls, child, men, and boys' patterns. By the way, these catalogs also have ads for sewing machines, threads, scissors, etc. Cover of the E. Butterick and Company Summer's Catalog 1882. 
Styles of garments with the pattern number next to the illustration. This time, lots of blouses and tops to choose from. Skirts, sleepwear, hats, gloves, kitchen apron, accessories, even cat, dog, and stop rabbit sewing projects. Take a look at the front cover of a front magazine called Lady Standard Magazine, year April 1894. There were ads for dishwasher, typewriter, hair curling, and dye products, and of course a bunch of fashion illustrations and lifestyle inspiration, also known as influencer in today's standards. This magazine was full of beautiful illustration and even had millinery fashions. This is the Spring Summer Catalog front cover of McCall's Patterns in 1909. At the turn of the century, I noticed that the ink bleed is less of these illustrations. The drawings are more defined and easier to look at. I noticed that the length in any of these patterns, especially pants and skirts, were not a crucial requirement. I wonder if I missed this or not required at all. Perhaps the width and circumference were more important than length, which could be a common sense judgment or discretion, at least from what I read. How much were these patterns? It ranged from 10 cents to $3, depending on complexity. Here is the oldest pattern I could find. The front cover is missing. It is an advanced apron pattern. It is falling apart. 15 cents. Here is the real punch hole. As promised in the catalog, the pattern shows up already cut to your measurements. No labels or line marks on the actual pattern tissue paper. People's expectations were very low, and that was a good thing. In this part of the video, I'm comparing the McCall's sewing catalog today versus that of McCall's in 1909. Take a look. Thanks for watching.